Now it's time to divide ATC or a traffic controller responsibilities into different sectors and try to understand who does what as separate. The first one of this unit is the delivery unit. Because this unit gives initial clearance to aircrafts, it's also called clearance in many airport charts. According to flight plans, this unit releases the aircraft for that specific flight. Delivery or clearance units are generally located in more complex airports. In most smaller airports, the ground controllers takes this role and do the same job. The next unit is the ground. After delivery releases the aircraft, the ground controller takes responsibility. This unit is responsible to give the aircraft pushback and startup clearance. Ground controllers also give required taxi routes until the holding point for the runway which aircraft will take off. Another unit is tower. While the aircraft is approaching the holding point which aircraft will take off, the tower controller takes over the control from the ground controller. Tower controller is generally responsible for the traffic which will depart from the runway or approach to the runway. After the aircraft departs, the tower controller transfers his or her responsibility to the departure controller if the aircraft has a radar facility. If not, pilot continues his navigation on its own if he has VFR flight plan or according to standard departure procedure which is planned in his IFR flight plan. Another unit is departure control. If the airport has the radar facility, it means that the airport may have the departure controller. Departure controllers are generally responsible for the aircrafts which have departed from the runway until a certain altitude. These units are located in generally crowded airports. Because these kinds of airports have very heavy air traffic, the aircrafts which have departed from different runways or in approach may coincide in air. So radar vectoring can solve this kind of problems by deviating the aircraft from their standard routes. Departure controllers watch aircrafts in their radar screen and give heading to aircrafts when it is necessary. Radar vectoring is not requested just by controllers. It may also be requested from pilots to escape from serious weather occurrences like thunderstorm or cumulonimbus clouds which may be very dangerous for aircrafts. Weather radars in aircrafts show pilots where these clouds start and end so pilots may request new heading to deviate. Other ATC sector is en route controllers or area controllers. After passing a certain altitude, departure control or tower transfers us to en route controller. En route controllers are generally also called as area control or center. Every country has area controllers to control air traffic passing over their countries. Each center is responsible for many thousands of square miles of airspace. This is known as a flight information region or FAR and for the airports within that airspace. Center controllers are responsible for issuing instructions to the pilots to climb their aircraft to their assigned altitude while at the same time ensuring that the aircraft is properly separated from all other aircrafts in the immediate area. Additionally, the aircraft must be placed in a flow consistent with the aircraft's routes of flight. After the en route phase has finished and the top of descent point has been reached, we start our descent for the airport that we will land. 
Now it's time to be transferred to the approach control. While approaching related terminal area in root controllers transfers us to approach controller for related airport. Many airports have a radar control facility that is associated with the airport. In most countries, this is referred as terminal control. Terminal control may be worked as departure and approach control differently in some airports. While departure control controls the outbound traffic, approach controls the inbound traffic for that airport. So we can accept that the approach control works in opposite of the departure control. In so many airports which are not so busy, these departure and approach controls may be combined together to reduce extra workforce. Generally, until being inbound for the final approach course, approach controller manages the aircraft traffic, then transfers us to the tower control. After we land and vacate the runway, tower transfers us to ground control as the final air traffic controller of the specific flight. And finally, ground control guides us to until parking. Actually, transferring order of communication during landing works completely opposite comparing the transferring order for takeoff. So, until now, Roughly we have seen that all these air traffic control units do. With our next videos, we will dive into the details of duties of these air traffic control units.